back. Uh, episode five. Right, following on from episode four, when I was looking at um, bringing in the Sennheiser E906 to add to my guitar tones in an effort to um, just make sure that I'm getting the best sound I can possibly get in this little space that I'm setting up for myself out here. So any new viewers, thanks for tuning in. Uh, anyone that's come back for another view, thanks for joining again. All right, so I've had a bit of time to look at the footage, the sounds and whatnot that I captured for the last last episode. And um, on, on review of those, I'd have to say that probably my favorite sounds um, that I captured were, as I'd expect, from the two notes. It's probably the most expensive piece of kit that I've got for capturing the sounds out here. The direct sounds, not notwithstanding the interface and you know the computer and whatnot. So yeah, the sounds out of the two notes were definitely the most preferable. If anything, I did notice that maybe the high end presence was probably a rolled off a little bit more than I would have otherwise liked, but I'm sure that could probably be tweaked a bit by choosing a different cab, a different room setting within the Two Notes app. Um, not here to demonstrate that. There's probably thousands of um, demonstrations already on YouTube. I'm just sort of presenting uh, the picture of what I'm getting out here in this little space. And if anyone's got any other suggestions about what cabs I should look at, it probably might have a bit more presence than the one I used in the Two Notes, which I think was, um, the Fane cab, it may have been a dark room. I'll try and put in a clip of the a screenshot out of two notes now to sort of show roughly what I had going on. But I did find this guy here added a nice amount of presence um, to the guitar tone. But what I also found was there was a lot of extra uh, room sound uh, that it also picked up. Full disclaimer, this room is pretty bright. Um, I've done very little to no sound treatment other than what you can see, like curtain, side and, side and back, just to sort of deaden some of the reflective surfaces because it's basically a glass box. So anyway, that being said, having a look and listen to some of the audio, um, yeah, the, the Sennheiser actually picked up more room than I otherwise gave it credit for because it hangs directly on the on the cab. Uh, just a quick cut in. Um, it's a super cardioid mic pattern, so no surprises. It's getting some spill from behind the mic. Not a bad thing. Um, probably just makes some of the other mics that I've got in the room a little redundant. Um, considering what the sounds out of the two notes is getting. Although I'll probably persist for the time being having a little shotgun condenser at the back of the room. Um, if nothing else, just to um, blend in a tiny bit of room verb. I also realized that there's this little dip switch. I don't know if you can see that or whether the camera's focused in on it enough. Um, I wondered if that could change the pickup pattern of the mic, it can't. I've dived into the manual and basically it's a presence filter on the mic. Um, in the up position uh, is extended presence and upper end. In the middle position where I've got it set, it's the flat presence position. And in the lower position, it's obviously lowered, uh, rolled off on the high end. So just a bit softer response. I like it best in the middle position. I figure that's fair considering this is a bright room. I could probably try the rolled off position, but I'll just leave it as it is, set in the middle. So it keeps everything um, even playing field. Anyway. So it led me to going wild goose chase out in the shed. I found some other bits of kit, namely this guy right here, GFI, Cab Zeus Mono. I've had a play with this. Great live solution, and I did use it whilst gigging. Um, fantastic playing live to um, use a piece of kit like this um, just to prevent any squeals through the desk, through the PA, 
when you're you know in small stage spaces and whatnot and having um amps on mics near wedges that might otherwise cause feedback like i said super handy piece of kit for playing live but in a recording space not so useful so uh going forward um yeah i think i'll stick i'll stick with the two notes i'm keen to try an ox box i have an ox box um so I'm going to get it into the space and get some sounds up from that. And so stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, slowly moving our way to um, just looking at uh, rec recorded guitar tones and, you know, pedal boards, um, guitars, and um, just different effects. So um, still getting my head into DaVinci Resolve. At this stage, I'm still using iMovie because... Um, my workflow with DaVinci is pretty slow and the turnaround for using it, it's um, pretty laborious for, for me at the moment. But anyway, that's work in progress and still ongoing. So I do plan to switch to that. Um, yeah, so it's all coming along. So um, anyway, I'll throw in some guitar tones now, basically just using the pedal board that I've got set up for the space. Um, which has still still has the barefoot fuzz on it, the exotic AC booster, um, full tone plimsoll, which I quite like, uh, and the specular tempest and the boss RC3 looper. Um, no modulation, but do we love it secretly and just not use it? Or do we use it secretly and just not tell anyone? I guess that's another episode and um, Stay tuned for some guitar sounds. Will they have modulation? Maybe. Do they have modulation? Maybe not. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm Chris, coming to you from my house in Christchurch, and I'll see you guys all on the next episode. Until then, catch you later. Bye.